Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will explain how you can make quite a lot of gold just by leaving some of your alts in specific places and then maybe once or twice per day you just want to log in into these different characters, see if the different rares and bosses I'm going to talk about in today's video are up or not. If they are, you can kill them, get the loot and then sell all these different items on the auction house. And if they're not, you can log off and try to do that with other characters. So this is normally something that should really just take you a few minutes every day because again, most of the mobs that I'm going to talk about in today's video are always at the same location, so you don't really have to move around. You can really just log in and log off automatically if you see that they are not up. There are just two of these different mobs that you will need to track a little bit, but overall this is something that is very quick and like that you can get some really interesting items that you can sell for a lot of gold on the auction house. So at number 7, we're gonna have Nok Karosh. Nok Karosh is an elite wolf that you can find in the Frostfire Ridge in Wallows of Draenor. And basically, each time you kill this wolf, you will get the famous mount, the Garn Night Owl. So this mount is something that you can sell extremely fast on the auction house because it's very cheap. And this is something that you can farm again and again and again. This wolf is basically respawning every 15 minutes and like that you can really easily once or twice per day just log in, kill the wolf if he's up and then get the mount and sell it. So this is something that is very easy. Again, you won't make millions with this mount but it's still a nice thing to do in order to get a little bit more gold very easily from selling this mount. Now at number 6, we are going to have the rare Poseidus. Poseidus is a rare that you can find in Fashir, in Cataclysm, and each time you kill him, you will receive this mount, the Reigns of Poseidus. So this is a really interesting mount because it sells extremely fast and for a very good price. So on average, it's probably around like 8,000 gold on European realms. And again, this is something that is guaranteed when you kill the rare. So the only annoying part with this farm is the fact that Poseidus can basically spawn in different parts of Vajir, so you will need to circle a little bit in order to find it. Basically, you have five main spawn points. The first one is just here in the Bilaran Ridge. Then you have one here in the ruins of the Telserai Temple. Then one here in the Silvertide Hollow. One in the ruins of Vajir. And finally, in the Abyssal Depth, you have a last one just here. So you will probably have to circle a little bit in order to find a rare, but again, it's not too long. The only thing you need to have in order to actually do uh, this farm is to have the Vashir Seahorse, because otherwise for you, it will be very difficult to actually navigate from one point to another. So all you want to do on the alt you want to leave in Vashir is to do the short quest line in order to have access to Vashir and then to be able to breathe underwater and then in order to get the mount. So this is something that normally is very quick and after that you can just leave this character in Vashir and only logging a few times a day in order to find Poseidus, get the mount and sell it on the auction house. Then at number 5, we're gonna have another rare, this time from Classic Quo, and this is Scale Belly. Scale Belly is a crocodilisk that you can find just here in the Cape of uh, Stronghorn. It will be located in the Crystal Vein Mine. And basically, when you kill this crocodilisk, you have a chance of getting the famous chromatic sword. And this sword is very interesting because it has a unique appearance and it has this very nice uh, glowing effect on top of it. And so this is something that always sells, even if it can take a little bit of time, you should be able to make quite a lot of gold if you manage to get this sword. So really, all you want to do for this one is to have one character with sitting just there, Inside the mine, this is where the rare will spawn. And again, once or twice or whenever you want during the day, just log in, see if the rare is up, kill him, try to get the sword and then log off. So this is something that should really just take a few minutes. And like that, you will most likely after a couple of tries be able to get the sword and sell it on the auction house. Keep in mind, this rare is a rare that a lot of people are killing and also there is a pretty big uh, respawn timer, I think it's a couple of hours, so you might not be able to see him that often, but again, it's always good to have one character sitting there and like that you might be able to kill him multiple times. Then after that, at number 5, we're gonna have all the different world bosses from Cataclysm. So in total, you have 5 different world bosses, 
and all of them can spawn multiple times a day and so you, each time you can kill them and you will receive some loot so this is something you can do multiple times a day in total you have these different world bosses you have akamat who is located in Uldum, the old version not the one from battle for azeroth you then have gar who is located just here in mount Aijol. then in azeroth you also have uh, just here the Julak Doom, who is, look, who is just walking all around this place. Then in Magir, you also have Mobus, who is circling all around this part of the Abyssal Death. And finally, in the middle, in the Maelstrom, you will have Zariona, who is circling all around here. She's flying in the sky. So, all these different rares are really interesting because they all have some unique loot. Most of them are basically transmog appearances and things like that. But all of them can drop some very interesting plants and patterns. And these plants and patterns can then be sold on the auction house for millions of gold. So this is really something if you manage to get your hands on these different plants and patterns, you can then sell them for a huge amount of gold. And of course, you can also decide to learn them and then craft the different items you can craft with these different plants and patterns and sell these items for also a lot of gold on the auction house. So two of these patterns or designs that are the most interesting are going to be the one for the High Society Top Hat and for the Rhinestone Sunglasses. As you can see, the High Society Top Hat pattern on European realms will sell on average for 4 million gold and on US realms for 5 million gold. And then the design for the rhinestone sunglasses will be on average for 3 million gold on European realms and 3.5 million gold on US realms. So again here, as you want to only leave one character, I would say that probably, in my opinion, the easiest ones are gonna be Akamat or maybe Gar, because these ones don't really move, you can find them very very easily. You of course also have Julak Doom, who could be a good option. And there is, of course, Mobus, uh, because Mobus is in the same area where you can also find Poseidus, so you can do both at the same time. But overall, these are really the ones I would recommend you to check. Even Xayona can be interesting because there is maybe like a little bit less people farming her, but again, you'll just have to circle her a little bit around in order to find her, so it can just take a little bit more time. After that, at number 3, we're gonna have this time a vendor that can sell some very, very interesting cosmetic items that you can then sell on the auction house for millions of gold. So this vendor is located just here in Night Heaven and her name is Genia. So as you can see, this vendor will sell a couple of these cosmetic dresses and there are three of these dresses that are rare. So it means that basically they will only be available once maybe every two months and once someone buys it then it disappears from the vendor and you will only be able to find it again in two months so these different robes include the formal denki the red traditional embok and the green wedding embok and as you can see for instance with the formal denki which is the rarest one right now it can be sold on the european realms for on average 622,000 gold to 1 million gold and on US realms for 1,184,000 gold to 1,739,000 gold. So this is really something when you are able to get it, you will most likely sell it for a lot of gold. And keep in mind, this is a cosmetic item, so it means that anyone can use it, even a warrior. After that, at number 2, we're gonna have all the different rares from the Isle of Thunder in Mist of Pondrae. Basically, when you kill all these different rares on a Warlock, you will have a chance at getting the sealed Tomb of the Lost Legion that you can then sell on the auction house for quite a lot of money. So again, this is only something that will work if you're doing it on a Warlock, but it's pretty easy to just create an alt, put him there, and then again, once or twice per day, just logging and try to kill all these different rares in order to get the sealed Tomb of the Lost Legion. So as you can see, you will have quite a lot of these different rares and all of them can drop this tome. So you have all these ones around here and really the easiest way for you to do this tour is to simply start wherever you want and then really circle around, kill all the different rares and like that you will again have a chance at getting this tome. And finally at number one, we're gonna have the two world bosses from the Burning Crescent. 
So in total, you have Doomwalker, who is located just here at the entrance of the Black Temple. It will usually just circle around here. And then in the Hellfire Peninsula, you will have Kazakh, who is located just here in the Throne of Kil'jaeda. So these two world bosses are extremely interesting because when you kill them, you have a chance of getting these rare transmog items and all of them can be sold on the auction house for really a good value and pretty fast. So with Kazakh, you will have, for instance, the Exodor Lifestyle or also the Hope Ender Sword. You also have like a couple of other items, but all of them are not as interesting as these two weapons. And then with Doomwalker, you will have this gun right here. This axe, this one is probably one of the best you can get and also the Talon of the Tempest. And then as you can see, you have a couple more things that you can also again sell on the auction house for a little bit of gold. But in most cases, the ones you're really after are all these different weapons. So each time you kill one of these war bosses, you will have two random drops. So sometimes you can unfortunately get two rings or, you know, two necklaces, but sometimes you can also get two weapons at once. And like that, you can make maybe 100k just by killing one of these world bosses. So really again here, what you want to do is just leave one character, logging, see if they're spawned or not, and then log off. These probably have between 3 to 6 hours of respawn timer, so it might take a little bit of time before you find one. But again, as soon as you find one, you will most likely be able to make a lot of gold with the different items you will get. Also, if you want to kill Doomwalker but you don't want to leave a character there, what you can do is with this toy, the Fractured Necolite Skull, you can simply target any type of creature and then you can click on this toy and it will just summon a portal that you can use and you will directly arrive in front of the entrance of Black Temple, so where Doomwalker is located and like that you will have a chance at killing it. So, this is really something that is extremely easy to do and this is another alternative if you don't want to leave a character just for this world boss and if you still want to have a chance of getting some of these items. And of course as always I, was, I would always recommend you to do it in Ramadan and then to go in any of the different towns that are just next to the Black Temple, remove Warmodon and then go and see if uh, Doomwalker is up in Warmodov as well. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I really hope it will help you make some gold with some of your alts. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great weekend. Bye.